Bonjour and welcome. I did Italian there. Bonjour. Bonjour. <laughs> Take two. Oui, oui. <laughs> Bonjour, and What's welcome song? to another episode of the Caffeine <laughs> Librarians. We're getting a little French to end off our musical series with Jacques Demy's 1976, 1967 musical, The Young Girls of Rochefort. Set in the seaside town of Rochefort, it's a... Uh, there's a lot going on here. It's a lot of pairs, a lot of a lot of people just sort of interacting. You get a great sense of community in this movie. Yeah. But yeah, the main characters are Solange and Delphine. Delphine, a pair of twins mm-hmm. who one of them dances, one of them uh, is a musician, and oui. they're they're trying to get out of their uh, their town. <laughs> Want to go to Paris? Which they made their town seem so provincial. I'm like, this doesn't really seem... This town gross. looks gorgeous. What's wrong with people? Oh, <laughs> so, beautiful. yeah, th- this was filmed in actual Rochefort, but Jacques Demy likes to do a thing where he'll film in real locations, but he'll repaint a lot of things to be very vibrant colors. Oh, yeah, and the colors were gorgeous. Yes, in this film. so it creates sort of like almost like the feeling of a studio set, but it's very real still. Yeah, yeah. I love it. No, I, I, one of the things that struck me about this film were the colors. Like, I was legit loving the outfits, yeah. mostly of the women. But like, like the, like, I like how like the colors were matching, and I love the tights. Right? Yeah. yeah, and I, yeah, it was just, it was just so much fun, and it's, it's such a beautiful location. But I was just like, we need to get out of here, and I'm like, why? Why well, would you want to leave? I mean, I know Paris is the... I understand. But, the city but, but, of dreams. But it's also like if you grow up in the same place, the same neighborhood, the same people, the same everything. Yeah. The grass is always green. There, it's perfect. It's there mundane. is an axe murderer running around. Yeah. Yeah. And there are constantly soldiers yeah. mobilizing. We just, yeah. The whole movie went on for like an hour, and then they decide to have dinner, and they're like, oh, there's an axe murderer. And they were so can, calm about can we, it. Can we talk about that? And I know... Like I, if we were in New York, we'd be like, what? <laughs> no, it's like, actually, like, no, we'd be like, oh, okay, come on. yeah. <laughs> like it's Tuesday. Yeah, we need to like talk about that's that. That's kind of how they acted too. They were like, they like were so nonchalant about it. It's, it's like, like, oh, there's an ex murderer. The, the, the sailor guy was made a joke about it. He was like, he was like, cut oh, her down, cut to her size. down to size, I guess, huh? Yeah. Well, I love like, that guy. And he was also insinuating that it was her fault. Like maybe she jilted him, and I'm like, no, dude. That does not excuse being cut. But I like I says, oh, he cut up. And then, like, when there's the actual basket holding her remains, the <laughs> police sweep wa- in the street. And like, you're like, oh, my God. Did you-? It's like, legit, there's remains in the basket. Some sense of, like, I don't Someone know. Someone literally, literally the- stood there very calm. She was like, oh, yeah, that's the basket they found and, her in. And, uh, <laughs> the, and the Max is so unfazed by it that when he's talking to Solange, he's like, He's like, oh, just because you have red hair, I wouldn't kill you. Do you want to come see my art? <laughs> like, One of the times, I a redhead back. has its perks. And, and also, it's us. also like, I like how, like, and Boo Boo, like, and I know people have Boo-boo. nicknames. Is Boo Boo his actual name? Because I hope That's to God not. That's all they call him. They call him Boo Boo. Hopefully it's a nickname. That's all we know. So. But I like how she says, like, two strangers, yeah, go pick him up. I'm like, okay, I find I know this was the 60s, different time, different place. But you legit just met these two men. Uh, pick up, oh, my, kid. Pick up Look, my kid. I'm like, okay. This film is very French. Yeah. It, it has that French sense of laissez faire community, just sort of like. Yeah, trust everybody. I want to hang out of that French fry stand so oh, badly. Yeah. It looks so like modern and cigarettes. nice. Uh, yeah. Like, it looks like no. one of those cafes, like pop up cafes you see that happen in like New York City sometimes, where they're like, just, it's just there. Yeah. But it's so. She takes really good care of it. Oh, yeah, I know. Yeah. But I did not make her see see her make. First off, Max came in at like six o'clock in the morning. Was like, "Can I have a beer?" And I was like, "I know." France. When, Starting when, off the day when right. Again. Yeah. <laughs> He's uh, like, and, "I got to do my rounds." And this you know, so it's, I forgot because like something that kind of threw me off until I remembered Europe was that the kid, the boy, the is going to school every single day. And I was like, "Wait a minute, don't they have weekends?" And then I remember, no, it's Europe, because my mom, when she was in Sicily. She went to school even on weekends. There was no concept of the weekends. You don't have school. So it was like Monday through Sunday. She was going to class. I was yeah. like, so like I had to remember that. I was like, why is he in school yeah. if it's a weekend? He's also drinking the champagne and everything yeah, like that. And well, and, well, when my dad was younger, no, no, they didn't pour fine. the glass. But they, they gave yeah. like a little bit he of. He was drinking a full glass. And, and then she jokes. She's like, he's unbearable. I, know. I was like, I like that. <laughs> it's good, you know? 
yeah. won't have to worry about binge drinking. Yeah, exactly. When you go That's off why we to have, university. Yeah, PSA, America. <laughs> That's why binge drinking is such a problem. No, here. my dad, when he was younger, like his father, this was in Sicily, he used to send him to buy wine. Yeah. And my father was not legal age, but my father knew if he drank from it, he'd be in trouble. You know, but no one said, like, I, oh, you know, yeah. so, I, I, yeah, it's a whole different thing. No, I'm not encouraging underage drinking. Oh, I I'm am. I'm just saying. I am. I'm my little brother's well, going how to about we just, How and about so we just try and lower the that. drinking age limit May, back to 18? Mayapak Public Library endorses <laughs> underage drinking. Front page Not Mayapak US, News. At least. <laughs> how about we just have start a conversation of lowering I remember, the drinking age back to 18? I remember when um, I went to Romania, and the first like night we went, we were there, we went to like a folk dinner, and the first thing they gave us was like this Wait, apple what? whiskey. Oh. Applejack? Yeah. And my dad was I've like, never tried it. I really want to. My dad was like, to. take it. And I was like, dad, no. Because I was like 16. I was like, no. And he was just like, no, just just, just take it. Like, just take And he was like, it's Did okay. You? Just take it. I took it. I didn't drink it because then we, he just wanted like the extra cup for like a souvenir. He was like, I was like, uh, I was like but dad, I'm only 16. You ever try the, the winter? <laughs> then I realized the, the drinking age jack? there is 16. Oh, oh that's okay. delightful. Yeah, it's like Christmas. And Honey Jack, too. Yeah, also great. amazing. Yeah. And in the freezer, you put it in the freezer. Oh my, it's so good. I regret not drinking yeah. it though because you can't get like, drunk. Now I really love like the hard liquor. So I was like, I'm like, oh man, I probably really really like that. <laughs> I was like, now, God. You're a hard liquor person. Mm-hmm. What kind of liquor? I don't really know. You just put it in front of me, and I'm okay. <laughs> Fair enough. I do like bourbons and I do like whiskeys. Nice. So <laughs> nice. my grandpa has like a whole collection. But I have a friend who comes back from California occasionally, and his friends give him, like, really expensive gifts nice. of, like, it. So we always have, like, a try. Nice. Oh, it it's nice. It's nice. I like it. <laughs> I prefer gin. So no part of this I, film was shot, like, in a studio? Gin's no. Too. Oh, okay. Yes. Uh, would you like some background on yes. sort of, like, the film movement this is a part of? Okay, yes. so this yes. is French New Wave. Okay. So how this happens is post-World War II, uh, U.S. has some uh, some deals with France and is sort of is some cultural imperialism yeah. going on. <laughs> we ship over an insane amount of Hollywood films, and we there France is sort of obligated to show like a lot of Hollywood movies in addition to their own cinema, okay. and. We, because we're shipping over just like the last like thirty years of film history wow. all at once, uh, sort of. Like, a younger generation grows up on this Hollywood cinema, and they start to notice trends. The concept of, like, the director as an auteur comes from here, because, like, when you wa- when you start watching, like, ten Hitchcock movies in a row, you start to notice some similarities, you know? And you're like, yeah, I think maybe he's the real guy behind this. Yeah. <laughs> I know who the bad guy is. I don't need to watch this movie. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and then a lot of them became film critics uh, and ended up. And then from there, they... A lot of them started a magazine, Cahiers du Cinéma, where it, which published a lot of very uh, contrarian and very uh, co- in purposely controversial takes, oftentimes with very political leaning. French. Uh, yes, yes, very <laughs> French. That's nothing new. That's nothing new. And uh, and then eventually, a lot of them, like Jean Luc Godard and Francois Truffaut, ended up making their own films and sort of redefining film grammar. A lot of times, they would riff on sort of Hollywood genre and imagery. And that kind of thing. Uh, Jacques Demy is not from the Cahiers crowd, but he's very much part of the new wave. Uh, he is he had actually had a background in animation before he moved into live action stuff, and he was very inspired by Hollywood musicals, fairy tales, that sort of thing. Uh, though he sort of takes it at more of like a uh, he all, he's has an obsession with like coincidence and just total chance. That makes yeah. a lot. That's yes. considering yeah. this movie was nothing but a lot of coincidences uh, that made me angry. <laughs> Amanda, you might uh, be interested in this. He actually uh, did an adaptation of Rose of Versailles in the 70s. He did a film called Lady Oscar. and it's, I know Lady Oscar. It's really fun. <laughs> okay. I, I, I'm a fa- I haven't read the original, but I watched it with a friend who did. They, they said it was a good adaptation. So how was... Okay. Um, French cinema, like, prior to when, like, the U.S. made them sort of take a bunch of our films, like, how would French cinema have differed from, like, what it... Uh, if you, it pre-World was... Pre-World War II. Yeah. Pre-World War II. I'm... 
a little ignorant when it comes to that okay. kind of stuff. Though, like, you did have, like, Jean Renoir running around. Okay. He did, like, uh, Rules of the Game and uh, what's the other one? Grand Illusion. Uh, he sort of, I, again, I don't know Renoir too well, yeah. unfortunately. But, uh, yeah, and though at a certain point, like post-World War II, from the writings of Truffaut, there, he sort of railed against uh, Le Cinema du Papa, a.k.a. Dad Cinema. Uh, oh, and he was just like, and Cinema du Quality, no which is just like <laughs> rubber stamp to prove like Oscar bait type stuff. I'm just oh, like, oh, okay. here is like, here's a prepackaged film. Whereas okay. French New Wave stuff was very much interested in getting out of the studio, just filming on the street, very okay. spontaneous, very interested in like mixing high art and like philosophy and stuff okay. with like low art and genre and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Does France now, like I know for example with Korea, they protect sort of like their home cinema, so they limit foreign imports to sort of, sort of protect their own cinema. Does France do something similar where they limit foreign import to sort of protect their own? I'm not sure right okay. now. Uh, yeah, I'd have to look into that, okay. but I wouldn't be su surprised. The French government also funds, like, a lot of things, like, even oh. stuff outside of France. Oh. Season 3 of Twin Peaks somehow was partially funded by the French government. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't really understand that, but oh. sure. Oh. But, yeah, and, but, yeah, Jacques Demy awesome he got interested in making musicals like late 60s and that sort of stuck with him and it's so good and i, I mean i don't know how big rochefort is supposed to be but i kind of like when you learn like the twist about um uh, God. the guy whose name is dame yeah dame. Simone dame. Madame dame. the guy that is literally like down the street but from where she because, is. I know. Because, like, <laughs> what, what I found so interesting is that, like, so she must have lied about going to Mexico, I'm assuming? Did yes. she? Yes. yes. So, but it's like, okay, one would assume they've probably been in Rochefort most of their lives. Yes. Now, I like how everyone and their she mother that, yeah. meets up. Yeah. But these two exactly. have the never thing. met up. <laughs> so I was like, I was like, oh, come on, dude. Yeah. And then for a horrifying moment, I thought Solange was going to fall in love with her dad. Me too. Yes. Okay, I'm not the only so one. So Jacques Demy also <laughs> plays around with incest a lot in his work. So I, I think that's an intentional <laughs> little tease of just yeah. like, ugh, because this could I, go very bad. Because I was like, God, I was like, I'm not going to lie. I did at the beginning. Like, I didn't know that was their dad. Because they hadn't like put that out there yet, I was like, "Aw, he respects the music, and like she's music. They're gonna be so cute together." And then the mom starts singing, "There once was a time." And I was no, like, thank oh, God, stop Gene it. Kelly comes in <laughs> yeah, and, and stomps. That. I didn't get that that was the father. I just thought that was like a past love because she made it sound like she had the twins. Though he's him. not their father. Okay. Yeah, oh, okay. he's Boo Boo's father. Yeah, I didn't think so. She had the twins before Boo Boo, and she mentions in her song about him, like, I kept them she out of sight, he and him. he never met them. Oh! They were boarding school. Yeah. So they, they never came home oh, at night, okay. so they were, they, they were Still, overstays. Still, it'd be like the stepfather, though. Yeah. It, it, well, I guess. No, they're not married. So it they're not related. It would have been okay. All but right. still. It's half-brother. So. That's you don't their half-brother. The so. person of your mother's, you know. Anyway. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I'm well, with I you. And I thought it was creepy. I thought it would have been creepy, too. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, I wasn't, I didn't, well. He seemed like such a nice guy. I didn't think it was. Like, she's like, he was, I he think was, he was building his little, like, paper soldiers and stuff like that. I loved every time somebody was like. I love the grandfather just building a plane in the yeah. background the whole movie. I, was like, I never liked him. Just, I don't like you. He was a bastard. <laughs> Spending his I'm days like, in a fry your, shop. Build your plane. <laughs> build your plane. It's, it's, like, it's almost like the, uh, the grandfather character you see in old Hollywood movies and like some musicals. Like He kind of sort of reminded me of the grandfather from Meet Me in St. Louis. Yes. Uh, He's like, because the grandfather in Meet Me in St. Louis is very much like a stubborn old man who will tell it like it is, but also yeah. have like a soft Yo. side for like his granddaughters so and stuff like that. Yeah. I love Meet Me in St. Louis, but can we talk about how deranged the Halloween sequences in there? Yes. Like all of a sudden the movie yes. gets real scary out of nowhere. Yeah, and it's it like, does. oh. <laughs> yeah, it does. But then it kind of yeah. like, that kind of like, uh, like it, it's, it's offset by watching Judy Garland sing um, uh, 
I'm dreaming of a white Christmas. Yeah, the, I, I, I love the scary part. Yeah. Because I'm just like, what is happening? And, and I, I, love, I think this movie loved that scary yeah. part. And I love the <laughs> yeah. bluntness. I love how blunt and straightforward everyone, and it's very European. Oh, yeah. yes. Yeah. It's like Americans, we try to dance our way around, try to be polite. But like he says, nope, I don't want to see you anymore. Nope, you should leave. I, no, I really don't. It's like, it's so European. I love when Delphine shuts down the, uh, the artist guy. Can we? Yes. I hated that guy, and I know you're not meant to like him, but especially like he. I did think his painting gun. method was awesome. Did you know there's a place in the city that allows you to do that? Oh, I found I it. It's been there. all over my TikTok. I looked at Brian like, "Let's go!" Where you can like <laughs> bow and arrow shoot it, or you can get like a little like BB gun and they'll let you shoot it from far away, and it has like a art. spin table. Yeah. I was like, that sounds like so much fun. Yeah, that's my kind of art. Right? Like I'm but not like, a gun person, but, but I'm, I like, like how I'm like he shooting, like, pointed people. the gun at her, and then I was like, "Glad you got out of that." Can we? Hey, can we talk about how baller it is for a movie to go like 45 minutes and then be like, guess what? Gene Kelly's in this thing. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. That was. That was I don't cool. know who that is. He was Andy. <laughs> yeah, he yeah. is a very famous I'm, American yeah. actor who's famous for musicals. Yeah. D- yeah. One of the best dancers ever. Yeah. Yes. He's in Xanadu. He's the old man in that. Okay, and he's still movies. pretty baller in Xanadu, honestly. Yeah, he, was, for a man who was probably like 80, he's still tap dancing. Yeah. Like. And that was actually his last movie before he passed away, was Xanadu. And I think he was actually fluent in French, because I was wondering, like, it didn't sound like he was being dubbed. Like, it so sounded like his voice. Or he, was... it, uh, he, uh, his speaking parts are not dubbed, his singing parts are. Oh, okay. uh, in a typically French fashion, uh, Michel Legrand, the composer, said... Kelly had a short tessitura, only one octave. In Hollywood, where he often worked with him, he used to record with two other singers, one on his left for the low notes and one on the right for the high notes, which <laughs> sounds like <laughs> but, <Yeah>. you know. <laughs> okay. Though, Mikel Legrand kills it on this score. I love the oh, jazziness. Yeah. Just, uh, ah. Yeah. You were pointing out there's a lot of stuff La La Land La seemed La to La Land. be Did you inspired hear the tune by. that they were humming? Exactly. I was like, that I sounds think- just like the tune from... And, and <laughs> Joe, when we talked about La La Land, Joe had mentioned that Damien Chazelle and it sounds like Justin Hurwitz, the composer of La La Land, were very much, um, what's the word, uh, influenced yeah. by, um, mm. by this movie. And I mean, the, the tune is straight from it. I mean, Even just like the opening of like being stuck waiting for something and then yeah. people get out and start dancing. Yeah. And now, were any of like, I know they did a English language version which did not do well. It did not, it is not, it is lost yeah. to time. No one has found it. Okay. So, because one of the actors who plays one of the carnies was also in um, West, West Side Story. Yeah, George Shakiris. Is he? Is he being dubbed, or is he actually talking in French? I think he's probably dubbed. It looked okay. like he was being because, like, dubbed. Because it looked like a couple of people were being dubbed. Because sometimes I can't tell, like... A lot of European movies just did dubs by default, too. Oh, yeah? Yeah, so... It's yeah. easy. I was wondering if there was, like, if they didn't have, like, the microphone technology or something like that, or, or something. I didn't know. Cause it, or, or maybe because it was a musical, they were recording the voices... Separately or something. Yeah. Maybe they sound horrible on stage, but they sound really cool behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. I'm sure dancing and singing is a very difficult thing to do at the same time. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 No, they're not. They're. I don't think they're ever says. getting takes while yeah. <laughs> shots fired at 2005. <laughs> that was awesome when she did the hoe down all. <laughs> God, uh, she never did anything after that. No, at least pretty. none that I'm aware of. Yeah, yeah she lip synced. I just feel I bad. It wasn't. It, she was not the only one lip syncing. No, she no. Was, yeah. You could tell a lot of people were lip syncing. Yeah. <laughs> I could tell. I, I guess like, she was the only one that got caught. I was like, is this movie like you know? Yeah. I'm like, maybe this movie because of the way I'm watching it is like you know maybe like a little behind. And then I was like, no, no, that matched up. <laughs> I'm like, mm-hmm. Yeah. I was like, I don't know French enough to be able to check, like, lip movements in French, but there are some times where I was, like, really paying attention. It was definitely off a little bit, and, and that's why that's why I thought, like, a, a good portion of it was was probably dubbed. But also, um, films in general, don't don't they always do, like, a dub over? Because yes. Especially if, with, yeah. Yeah. And I've noticed with some other, like, going back to some European films where it's, like, 
I was watching Suspedia or like a film where it's like, are they talking in the language they're supposed to be talking in? Because no. I'm watching the it, lip movements. Um, like, what is going That on? was mainly an, like an American obsession. Oh. A lot of other countries really don't care if the lips match. Like Italian cinema especially was mm-hmm. kind of notorious for it because oh. a lot of times in Italian cinema, they just had people from all over. They had American actors. They had yeah. people from other countries. And so they just let them speak whatever language they wanted on set and know. just I know it, it doesn't over. really matter, but it kind of drove me insane. I was trying to figure out, like, what is going on? No, it's but the same thing me. with animation <laughs> from different countries. Yeah. I know in Japan they focus more on, like, because they don't really pay too close attention to mi- mouth movements if they pay a little more closely attention now but when like in the early 60s and stuff like that when they were coming out with stuff like speed racer and mm. astro boy <laughs> a lot of their lips were just kind of like bah, 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 bah. Yeah. and like maybe a smile but that was about it but the u.s tried really hard to match the mouth movements mm-hmm. and that's why they talk so fast in speed racer is that they're trying really hard um. and they didn't know how to localize at the time going over that cliff ah <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> I did also like the fairy tale esque sort of feel to yes. the film at certain points, and I was really trying to pay attention to what the background people were doing. Oh, I I Me love too. how the it. extras are like half dancing, half just walking. Yeah. Ha- like. I love. There was this one couple. It's when they're at the cafe, and it's a sailor and this woman, and I love how they're legit, not even attempting to like they're having a conversation. Like, I built up a story in my head, like, I'm sure this has to be a couple or someone like, but the woman legit is not looking at the guy. She has a face like she's angry at something. The guy is completely looking, so I was like, are they supposed to, like, be together? I was, I know it's not important. No, it's a beautiful (laughs) thing about this movie. The town feels alive. Like, you're looking at it, and you're like, I could live here. Like, this is a real place. Like That was also a really nice apartment that they had. Oh, those little flats? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're so nice. I love like, the doors. I was loving the huge. doors. I love yeah. the French look of, like, yeah. old school, like, yeah. flats where they're huge. It's like, the ceilings are huge. Well, yeah. it looks I mean, like an you, artist's dream. It looks you, like how, if you're, like, an artsy person. Yeah. I don't know. When I thought in New York, when I thought of, like, what are they called? Um, studios. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, studios look nice, because they remind me, but when I saw what a studio actually yeah. looked like, I was like, this isn't what I pictured. Because I was like, oh, open space, just walls yeah, and maybe stuff. Really, really nice studios. Yeah. <laughs> but like, uh, and then I, I got, I, then I saw a tiny studio, studio and apartment. it was like, <laughs> and you're like, oh, okay, the bed is right next to the refrigerator. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, this is like the penniless French. Okay. Yeah. This is like Moulin Rouge. I'm living this terrible. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you think about it, too, most of those homes would have been owned by aristocrats that have been ousted after the French Revolution. We don't talk about that. Well, I'm talking about it. <laughs> we do talk about it. <laughs> We're talking about it. <laughs> yeah, I, I loved the doors. I kept on looking at the doors. Yeah. Which probably is not the... Like, Big Jim Morrison fan? I, uh-huh. I mean, I love uh-huh. the doors. Uh-huh. Oh, <laughs> sorry. That went over my head. But that's the okay. doors is, is I like know a it's a band, but that went over. It's yet. an American band. band. But I, I, I appreciate the effort, Will. I appreciate it. Um, you got yeah. me. Look at me, pop culture here today. <laughs> I know. Yeah. Up names. Yeah, but I, I loved. I just loved the look. I loved the colors. I loved looking at what the extras were doing in the background. Yeah. It was just so fun. Yeah, I noticed one part where uh, where they're uh, setting up for the performance and everything like that. And I'm like, I was, for some reason, I'm, I don't know why, but I was also kind of paying attention to the background people. And like, you know, they're kind of like setting up the stage. And then I don't even think they were singing yet. And, and one of the guys that's on the stage kind of like grabs the pole and like kind of like dances around it to get down. And I'm like, what the hell is going on there? And then, of course, then they start singing and then they start dancing and everything like that. But it was like, yeah. I was, while they were setting up, the first time they get there, the one thing that I was questioning, and I probably shouldn't have questioned, the poles. They just set the poles down, and they were straight up. I'm like, I was looking at the bottom, like, how? 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 What is this witchcraft? And I'm like, they're dancing on poles that they just had a minute ago. Yeah, it's hands. wild. I'm like, I, I'm like, where? I love that stuff. Where? I'm like, where's ah, the support? It's magic. There's like, little thing to hold them up. I'm like, what is this? Also, did the dance number which is seem a bit awkward to you? They were so uneven. Yeah, and I know this is and not I, the important thing of the film. And I get not everybody's going to be in line. I get it. It's just, 
it was a little off-putting in the beginning. I was like, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. Because but I don't know if that's supposed to be the characters, like the characters being awkward and not sure of their performance. Because especially considering one of the sisters is a dancer, like, I don't know. Well, they're supposed to be both classically trained in dance and music. Just one has a specialty over the other, it looks uh, like. like. Uh, yeah, I, I think that's honestly just the style of it. I think, that's fair. That's I, fair. I, think I didn't they like hold it. too much uh, of a grudge. Yeah, I think, I think they like it a little more homespun, a little more, mm. yeah. I just, I remember there was the dance sequence with the, the two guys and their girlfriends at the time. Not girlfriends. I don't really know what they were. <laughs> they were girlfriends, yeah girlfriends being used tools whatever they wanted to say they were like oh, i hate this guy um but the girl with the pigtails i noticed her performance in comparison with the other girl and her dance partner he was going for it but she was like a oh, little hop and i'm just like oh girl come on you can do it i know you can get some air <laughs> she probably, she probably there were some times with the with the turns too i noticed that she was just like uh, turn and it's like uh I'm like, then again, she might be tired after doing this take. Maybe yeah, that probably was like the thousand take or something. I'm sure. But I didn't hold it against anybody. <laughs> also, with the bluntness that I appreciated, when the two guys legit tell them that they just want to sleep with the two of them, I was like, that is honesty there. At least they're honest, though. I At least I they're loved, honest with their intention. <laughs> I loved their shirts in that scene. I know, like, I talk about the clothes, but I, did anyone else love their shirts when they put on their white jeans and the sparkly yeah, shirts? Yeah, they... <laughs> I kind of love the the, the, those two guys' ones. outfits the whole movie. Uh, yeah. I was Did you like, see their ties? I wish I could pull off. Wish like I that. had a bro to color code with, yeah, you know? Right. Like. Yeah. <laughs> Did you guys notice their ties? I yeah, one of them had, like, a square tie and yeah. was, like, frayed was at the bottom very, and stuff. Like, it was There were cool. ones with these little, like, tufts at the yeah. end, the fringes. I I was just like, this might have been the fashion of the time, but I thought, oh, maybe because he's like a traveler, maybe it's frayed. Yeah, he's a carny. But then I realized one of the other guys, like, in the, um,. I believe in the gallery had the same tie and I was just like what is going on I'm like so it's not it's just a fashion thing and I was like I don't like this <laughs> I love the hats too like everything like I love yeah, the hats, hats that so the women big wore. and so well coordinated when the mother goes to see uh, Dame and she and she just pulls out the big hat from nowhere I'm like wow they all just have these huge white hats which is very that pretty. happened like a couple outfits. times yeah. where it was like there, that thing was there and now it's not there and I was just like What's going on? Damn, cool. damn. <laughs> and so, you know, not to jump to the end or anything, but so Max and Delphine are kind of like just missing each other the entire movie. I, I hated so that. I know that was the point. Angry. I yeah. hated that moment. I <laughs> For like, the whole movie, I didn't care about anybody else except Delphine because this guy kept pining for a woman he's never met. He's like, but I painted her. And he painted her first off. Not my style of painting. It didn't really go with anything else in the gallery. That's fine. Very tiny. I liked the, actually, the image behind it with the boats. I was like, I thought that was actually, like, the best part of the painting. Um, not that I'm an art critic. Art critic man over here. All right. <laughs> She's entitled to an opinion. <laughs> I liked that aspect of it. It felt like two different pieces going on at the same time, and I didn't really quite enjoy that. Um, no consistency. Uh, but... I was like, oh, so it's Delphine. Awesome. Maybe that's why. I'm surprised that the the, the curator actually, he's, like. Oh, because he's bitter. Yeah. Yeah. He, like, he kept it. And then she comes in and she's like, oh, is that me? He's like, I don't know. Maybe. Mm -hmm. But he pines for this woman he's never met. And they just barely keep missing each other. I'm like, oh. And I'm like, I'm looking at how long I have to go in this movie. And I'm like. It's been an hour. <laughs> and then it's like an hour and a half goes by. And I'm like, she's right. I thought when they were going to do their performance on the stage, I was like, oh, oh, they're saving it for like, oh, he sees he her from the German. crowd. Classic. Mm -hmm. No, there were only two people in the Ouch. crowd. And they were like the weird ex kind of feel. They were the other men. And I was like, oh, where is this man? He's like, oh, wait, he went on vacation. So when he said he was leaving, I was like, where are you going? Don't you dare. You I wanted them to like bump into each other. Everybody else was bumping into each other. But I guess Why? it's suggested at the end, since technically he's with the troop, that they, they started will they meet will. together. That, that's Everyone. what I'm assuming also, is that they Yeah, like yeah. they will meet I was up. so mad yeah. because the last 10 minutes of this movie came about, and I was like, okay, there's a lot of people looking for someone, and then like, you know, then you had like Solange finally get with Andy Miller, who was like, I also. 
Yo, F the, like, piano guy, because, Dame, because he was playing the sequence. He's like, man, I've heard that somewhere. I'm like, she was just in your parlor. How did you forget so soon? Oh, well. I mean, he doesn't he get any other right, customer. But he did the right. I mean, yeah. he went to get her and everything like that. Yeah, like, but he's playing the song. He's like, "Wow, this seems so familiar." And then he keeps playing. He's like, "Why does this sound so?" I'm like, "She was just in your store like an hour ago." Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. he's not, not remember. <laughs> I'm like, it doesn't look like you're busy. You're that man like is probably on like his tenth you. cigarette and the eighth <laughs> beer of the day. Like, that's a lot. But anyways, so Solange gets with her man. And then you had the two, you know, former lovers meet again. You're like, aw. And then Delphine is left all alone. And I'm like, no. No. You can't. No. 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 So you, <laughs> Amanda, if I had picked Demi's other big musical, Umbrella's a Sherboard, you would have been so mad. No, that I, movie is I'm crushing. Serious. No, I was legit pissed off. I was like, so angry. He, 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 was, uh, I'm like, no, you can't. Like, no, I, no, I don't like those kinds of... Listen, it's Bella. Meet up. That's life. I felt so bad. I also thought she wasn't going to go to Paris <laughs> because like, the, I saw the, the truck starting to go. And I was like, she missed that too. But then she got on the truck. I was like, oh, okay. Without her okay. sister, though. Oh, so my she sister just, found the man of her dreams. Right, but she doesn't know that. I know. I, I think nobody tells anybody does, anything. But I think she does kind of know it. So, like, yeah. she's not said anything. She doesn't, no one says anything to her. She just gets on the truck. And then as they start driving away, she kind of, like, looks to the side and stuff like that. It's almost like she realizes that the fact that her sister wasn't there was probably because she found her foreigner. You know? Yeah. Um, foreigner. <laughs> Yes. And uh, it was almost like a, a graduate moment. Yeah. Where, like, at the end, they realized, like, what do we just do? Yeah. yeah. You know, but she was like, okay, I, I get it, and now I need to go off and I do was, my thing. I yeah. was going off. I was sitting I was there just... in bed, like, oh, what? I'm like, come on, no. No, 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 no. <laughs> and then it's like the credits start rolling. I'm like, no. And then it brings it back, and he's, like, hitchhiking. And he's like, hey, guys. And I'm like, oh. Oh, yeah, oh, I but was... I'm like, but that's not a resolution. No, <laughs> don't don't ever do that to us, Joe. I'm, do that. I think that is a resolution. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to see him be like. Oh, I'm gonna I'm read a, a, a little bit <laughs> of a piece on it by Jonathan Rosenbaum, a film critic. Yeah, I think I think he's got a very sharp eye for to me. I also uh, have an issue with Max. In the beginning of the movie, when we meet him, he's brought like a charcoal painting. With him, he's like in the place, like doing like a charcoal painting, and then he just leaves it. He's like, "Oh, I gotta go to my maneuvers," and he just leaves it. And I'm like, he "Go!" <laughs> he's talking about how his other like works he hasn't are been in a bar base. where like I don't know they eat like scribble it was a and stuff. Piece of like, paper. You could make, I saw him painting, and the girls like the waitress is talking, but they're, he's the they're same doing the person that leaves thing. his bags all over the place. Yeah. So he's a little airhead. Everyone's yeah. just leaving things everywhere. Well, the city, uh, I, thankfully, the city ain't that big, so everyone finds each other. So it doesn't matter. And I understand, like you know, this is a very like fairy tale esque tale of like. As you said, uh, uh, coincidence and everybody kind of coming together. <laughs> oh man, I said long. I was going to read something. <laughs> what were you doing? I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Riled up. <laughs> Frazzled. All right. oh, okay. And even though The Young Girls of Rochefort could be described in some respects as Demi's most optimistic film, the one in which every character eventually finds the person she or he is looking for, the failed connections preceding the resolution are so relentless that they ultimately register more decisively. Indeed, the split second by which Max Sense misses Delphine in the cafe before he leaves Rochefort might be the most tragic single moment in all of Demi's work. Yes. By contrast, when this ideal Rochefort couple eventually do meet, an event represent, represent obliquely and off-screen in the final shot, this mainly registers as sort of offhand demi and endo in postscript, a simple concession to musical comedy convention. But we aren't fooled by this sentimental gesture. What reverberates longer and harder is the earlier moment of the character's ultimate dreams just missing the realization. God. Oh, so that makes it sound less hopeful. I, I do think this movie is, has a lot of joy in it, but I do think it's very aware of sometimes... Life just happens. Yeah. Wow. So I, I think it's very sim I think this uh, La La Land cribs more openly from the Umbrellas ending but I do think this is in a similar vein so do you think that they this director put that hitchhiking scene at the end as like just as like a like a fine I'll, I'll make this I know I, I, I think it's it's 
not an ending. I think it's Get there it. to play with the genre almost. Oh. I, I think it's, but I do, I don't know, I think it's meant. I don't think it's it's disingenuous, but I do think the sort of just like the, that moment of like, oh no, it is, is meant to reverberate, you know? Yeah. yeah. Joe, you'll be happy that I wasn't upset with the ending. <laughs> also, I want to know, how old are yeah. the girls supposed to be? I don't know. Too bad because she's a ballerina and she was like, I'm going to go dance in the ballet. I'm like, no, you're not. You're too old. That's how it is. That's how it is. She's too old now. Although we just. We don't know how old she is. I want to know how. That's why I want to know. But they're singing and dancing. Like she's like, one is an opera singer, which is fun. I mean, she's been trained in ballet. It's not like. But there's like, statistically, like there's kind of like a hit. What if I want to be a ballerina? Do you know tell how me I, I can't? can't. You yeah, have, actually, you yes. Me, you tell me I can't do it? <laughs> you you yeah. definitely can. My mom also turned me down me on playing year. violin. I'm going to so. learn ballet. I'm a pessimist. One year from today, <laughs> I'm going to come on this but show yeah. and dance. No, you... I know we just hit the, I think there was a record, actually, of the oldest ballerina. Yep. That just hit, I think, either last year or this year. Um, I mean, I guess if you're if you're thinking about it professionally, professionally, yeah, yes. there's, there's there's a point age. where there because yes. because but like that's up for the, any job, but no, but not for any, but job. some jobs <laughs> because of the physicality that's demanded. Yeah. You can't be you a Navy may, SEAL after twenty eight. I well, for some jobs because of physicality, there's a there's a cutoff point that's sooner that. than others. You know, um, but okay, Catherine Deneuve was twenty five. The actress was yeah. twenty-five. So, so maybe their the characters, characters are like the same age. Twenty. I don't know. I don't. I don't think that Survive really factors in too much. To I it. need to know. <laughs> but um, because yeah. her, she's gonna go to Paris and she's gonna get turned down. No, be hopeful. You gotta be hopeful. She could be a teacher. That's that's all she'll ever really be. Unfortunately. I'm just saying, you hit a peak in that. You were just so mad <laughs> that, like, they they teased you with it being sad, and now Two you're just hours like, she's amazing. doomed. Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, yeah. She's not going to find love. She's not going to get a career. I didn't say that. It's like they're going to Paris, and they're artists, so they're doing, like, you know, the art thing. But she, he, whereas he's a painter, and you can always get... You know, work as a painter what, when you're uh, older. Amanda, about this in Amanda, awkward. you were so mad like ten minutes ago that anything <laughs> in this movie could have been sad. Everything could always be sad. Well, yeah. Andy, what about Andy Miller? He's gonna have to go back to the U.S. What is she gonna do? I'm gonna go with him. Maybe. Was he American? Yes. 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 He, he was. An, yes. He was. He was from France. His name is Andy school. Miller. Andrew Miller. I thought at first, I got him mixed up with um, Miller at first. I thought they were trying to say that because they said he was like a playwright. And I was like, oh, no, that's not that him. No, but he went to school in France. And then he went to the U.S. And now he's back. And that's their whole thing, visiting. Because he's here doing a concert. But it's possible that if the romance blossoms as something more substantial, she will go with him to America. Mm, Probably. And like I said, I... Oh, she's definitely going with him. Yeah, I I mean, I understand life is not perfect, but, like, when I watch cinema of a certain type, I want escapism. And I understand that everyone ends up together... Still, it annoys. I have my escapisms. <laughs> it annoys. Some art is for escapism. Some art is for comfort yeah. in hard times. Yeah. Wait, wait. So you're especially saying? Since no, don't after, worry about it. Like, we, watch, we won't linger on this too much. Especially since art. after World no, 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 War II. No, no, we won't linger on this too much. You Joe's getting mad. Escapism? We won't linger on this. What? what, what I said, wasn't getting mad. I was giving my my opinion. Art. I'm just. <laughs> It's yeah. like it's like you want to get away no, from the pessimism and the nastiness. You're looking at me. I just, just said it. I just made a forget. Ignore what I said. Ignore it. I can't. Ignore. I don't know that I physically can. <laughs> you can't separate yourself from the real world and go into like a little fantasy world. No, no, no that's yourself. not what I said. Okay. I want you said when oh, you watch yeah, certain kind of yes. art, no, 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 you want that. escapism. What what are you? What about this? Is that certain kind of art? Is because you is a musical? You want us to start singing? No, 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 that's okay. Um, <laughs> we can sing. For no, a because that's the song. Stop. With the sound of music. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Never mind, forget I said it. Oh, no, I like it. Walk along. Walk along. Is, it, is it the world Just that you want to escape to? Cause that world is actually kind of cute. I love I mean, that town. <laughs> yeah, there were. I'd love to live in Rochefort. I'd, I'd own a bookstore. No, like when I was looking at the film, like 
yeah, it's set in an actual location, but there is that element of the magical, like yes. the fairy tale esque nature of yeah. The that's film. the the central tension yeah. of it. Yeah. yeah. So, and I understand there's a lot of coincidence, a lot of fate. It plays a major part. I mean, in this, I don't know how large this city is, but can't be that large. Everyone like meets I don't know. Andrew, else. Andrew Miller had had a really hard time finding that piano store. He was he was everywhere until he found Delphine, who told him where it was. And bro probably can't read. <laughs> bro can't read, even probably. though he lived here. <laughs> and she finally was like, "Yeah, just go down here and make a look." Yeah. So like, so with that film, although it's set within a very real place, it's not. What's the word? Um, how like, I don't know. The realism of the place is not necessarily af- like affecting the plot all that much. I think it's so, sort of. I'd maybe. argue it is though, because there there's an axe murderer running around. There <laughs> Which is was like a sub, very it, like tiny a sub. lot of people have are living lives filled with regret in this town. Yeah. Uh, like it's the mother like and Simone Dom. Okay, fine. Sound. The thing with me too is that I hate partying, like people partying and ever see. That's me. I have this thing. I'll admit it. I'm hung up on that stuff. Films where it's like, we may meet, we may never meet, bother me. Is that an aspect of life? Yes. Is it an aspect of life I want to dwell on? No. That answers your question. It does. This bothers me. So, like, in a film where, like, m- most of the other lovers have met up, I wanted Max and Duffy to meet up. It seems as though. Finally! Like, I love the it concept seems of, like, like yeah. it's... It's bothering you in an emotional way. Yes, because it was. I was invested. Parting is such sweet sorrow. As yeah, I'm gonna be okay. Said. Yeah, the other one I was thinking of picking for this, Umbrellas of Cherbourg, is about a couple. Neither of them do anything wrong, but their lives are torn apart because he gets drafted into the Algerian War, and they just through a series of circumstances they are forced to compromise. That's it, and it, it's just brutal. You yeah, watch it, it and you weep. Sadder than this movie. <laughs> Life is so compromised. You can't always get a hundred percent of what you want. Yeah, no, the the, the this <laughs> from the girl that wanted the that wanted them to meet. Yeah, Cherbourg, I just like Cherbourg's every animating. Moment, it felt like they missed each other just by a hair, and I'm like, just stay, just stay there. I'm like, have yeah. a cup of coffee, another one. Yeah, have Umbrella's beer. animating <laughs> thesis is more or less like, yeah, they're okay, but like. It shouldn't have had to have been like this. Yeah, and, and, I, like, and, I, and like, and I understand that that can be what life is about. There are people where they very much experience loss. You know, you meet someone, you never met the person again, but the, for the time you did spend, it impacted you in a meaningful way. But that's heartbreaking like for lost. me. That you basically just explain the ending of Lost. <laughs> so that for uh, me is heartbreaking. Spoilers. So like with films, it's like okay. Especially when I just love when a film breaks my heart, though. I, do I, like, I don't know. I, I kind of like when I get wrecked. Well, I yeah. mean, and, yeah. and doing it. I, I understand not wanting that all the time. Yeah. I well, fully like, get that. But, but yeah. doing it in a way where it's not for the sake of doing it. You know what I mean? Y- yeah, yeah. It's I don't know. It's, but uh, this film certainly did not. Because I've definitely that. seen films of where that's very much the case, where the ending is could be taken as happy, could be taken as sad, and... And I don't know, and that's life. I get it, but I think also for me that that's the aspect of life that I find very heartbreaking, very hard to deal with. So when I see it in a film, it's sort of like, I, yeah, whatever. But anyway, I mean, I like to think of the ending that there's a chance that Max and Delphine oh, they will do. meet yeah. up. Like, one yeah, he's getting on the truck. She's on. Like, yeah. So <laughs> I thought do. it was we another truck. Yeah. I thought it was yeah. another truck that he hops in. I don't think it was the one she was in. Yeah, I'm not sure if it's, it's the one that she's actually on, but they're all going the same place. Yeah, yeah. so I, I'm assuming, like, there's a chance, okay, unless he hops off before they get to the final destination. That's why I need a sequel that's another two-hour-long film of them teasing each other, actually being in the same area again, not Girls meeting each other. The girl, the young girl Girls of Paris. Rochefort. No, they wouldn't be. They would be the women of Paris. Yes. Then. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. I need them Got to it. be working for the same carny thing, <laughs> and then you know them constantly just missing each other, and be like. Sitting there like, come on. It's yeah. kind of like when you watch like those videos. The, they're like the satisfying videos when things just match up, or you're like, oh yes. And it's like it's one of those moments when it's it's almost there, and you're like, it's almost there, and something, and someone takes a left, and you're like, no, <laughs> it's almost perfect. <laughs> hey, at least it wasn't as ambiguous as the ending of The Sopranos. Oh yeah, I don't know what that means. I, didn't I watch beg to differ. I don't think <laughs> the see, of that, Sopranos was it. I didn't watch The Sopranos, but when I 
spoiler for those who don't know. But like when I saw that ending, legit, I would have been pissed off too. I was pissed off. I didn't even watch oh, the show. Lord. I hate ambiguity. I don't. And now, see, like, I, I just find it funny because I don't think it's, like, any more ambiguous like than, like, ending. the Mad Men ending. Agreed. Which, But, like, the Mad Men ending, I think, is generally was well-received at the time, it too. It was. Yeah. The yeah, only well, the the difference, I think, is that when Sopranos happened, and I kind of remember, like, my mom watching it and her being like, What?! Like, she, like, screamed <laughs> Yeah, the people thought just the TV went out. Yeah. 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 And, and now, like, the, when the Mad Men finale aired, I was able to Google it right afterwards and be like, analysis. When Sopranos <laughs> when finale happened? aired, there, was, it, what, yeah. like, there wasn't oh, there really yet. There. Like, yeah. So I think that that's a big reason why. I don't mind a level of ambiguity. Like, I but... watched The Sopranos later mm. on. So, like, I watched it when I was able to, like, be like, Okay, what the hell does that mean? I mean, I guess yeah. one I could argue, old. like, with the guy going in the store, okay, fine, he's been shot or whatever. But then I could argue, yeah, he could have been shot, he could have survived. He could be in the hospital no, recovering dead. from the gunshot. No, he's dead. But you don't know that. Tony, it, to it doesn't matter if Tony dies there. Tony will die a yeah. violent death. Yeah, he did. Yeah, no, he did. Yeah. So, There's FYI, no redemption for Tony. So yeah. FYI, Joe, if you ever come up with any more of these films, expect me to be angry. <laughs> this one is not about... even that sad. And it's, it's not sad. Sad is a matter of opinion. It was Let, kind of sad for me. I'm just saying. Let's skip whatever though. we're watching next week and just watch Blue Valentine. That'll cheer you up. No, it won't. No, it won't. I know. So I'm just saying, be prepared. I will bitch about this kind of thing if you ever show me a film where I'm crying or my heart, like, just be FYI. Saddest movie you can think of. Saddest movie I can think of. Yeah. Uh, Brothers of Cherbourg usually gets me weeping the whole way through. Yeah. Oh, God. Let's see. Right, so we, we'll, do, we'll do a sad movie series, but we'll split it up so that we don't have to kill ourselves after <laughs> the, five weeks. La La Land usually gets me. Yeah, uh, I don't know if I have this. Because I often like sad Oh, Magnolia. <laughs> Destructive <laughs> film. That makes yeah. me cry a lot. Uh, uh, what's the one with the it's based on the children's book where he's talking to a tree? Giving tree? And the, no, it's about the mother's dying. Oh, a monster? Uh, oh, monster, monster calls. Monster calls. Yeah. yeah, that movie, I teared up. Manchester by the Sea, I teared up in that. If you listen to the audiobook, it's fantastic. Oh, yeah. when a monster Does calls Liam it. Neeson narrate it? Not Liam Neeson. Because oh, he's, he's the voice of the tree. Oh, the I think. I, um, I don't recall who does the. He's got such a great timber. The actor who plays Lucius Malfoy is the one that I think yeah. he. Yeah, Jason um, Isaac. Yeah, he, I think, is the primary primary narrator for the um, book, but he does a fantastic job. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, he does a fantastic job. It's hard for me to say what the sad And that book killed is. me, too. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because it's like a meditation on grief and how a child oh, okay. deals with grief. And I was like, I mean, I didn't expect it to end where it's like, oh my God. I mean, there is a sense where he gains that closure, which yeah. I appreciate. But it, it wrecked me. And I was oh, like, yeah. another good graphic novel yeah. to check out is uh, I Kill Giants, which focuses on that. So I the watched movie, the movie. No. Read the, the comic book. There are several scenes in the fable. <laughs> I watched them that because part of me was like, I didn't yeah. think yeah. it could yeah. be done. Uh, they did an okay job, but I feel like they the missed a lot of good aspects. The saddest movie I ever saw was Little Prince. The comic's actually very short. I won't watch that movie. The, oh, the scene here. in The Irishman where De Niro falls down. Yeah. That's brutal. Uh the Godfather, the what was it, the second one when uh, when Vito Corleone is back in Sicily, you see his flashback and the mother gets shot. That scene kills me. Spoiler. For some reason, I thought you were gonna say when they kill Fredo, and I'm gonna be like, <laughs> I don't know why that was what I jumped to. Oh uh, no, that is a heartbreaking moment too, because honestly, at that point, Mike is just being a, a Fredo bitch. rules. What because a great Fredo character. Because Fredo at that point was harmless, and he and he like uh, yeah, that was just Michael was being vindictive. Be for it. But he waited till his mother died. Because that was a that was a cowardly move. Because if you're going to kill your brother, because you can't get over the, f I understand that he Fredo. Him. Well, He's a well, Fredo. Trust him. No, but Fredo, I think, didn't intend for things to go the way they went. And at that Fredo's point, me. I know I understand that. Fredo's I'm weak and stupid. I I understand what I'm saying, but at that point in the film, when he decides that now I'm going to kill my own brother. Fredo was no longer involved with any of the family dealings. He was legitimately retired. He could have he could have spared him. That was cowardly, the fact that he kills Fredo. At that point, Fredo was not involved in anything anymore. I'm sorry, I get really passionate about that. That was cowardly. Also, we have to, we do have to understand that toward 
like by the second movie, Michael Corleone is a monster. Oh, he yeah. is, yeah. yeah. But anyway, that's not the film we're talking about. But yeah. Should we talk about the Godfather movie? The first two. Oh, the third the, one sucks. The third one I'd should have not have been made. Um, <laughs> yeah. Hey, there's a recent re edit. Oh yeah. Yeah, he's got a couple of re edits all of his movies now. He's older. Yeah, I, I, some people liked it. Oh yeah. Yeah, I don't mm-hmm. know. But that's a hard. When I think of like sad moments in films, also Ghosts of Philadelphia. When I first watched it, and like the um, the father. It's called Ghosts of Philadelphia. I'm not. No, Ghosts of Mississippi. Sorry, not Ghosts. Ghosts of Miss, Mississippi. Um, when I watched it for the first time, and there's um, one of the characters is killed, and you're watching the reaction of the wife, and the, and they're just like screaming. I started crying. Like I haven't watched that since, but I just like broke down crying because like the visceral reaction of the family around like the death, it was really heartbreaking. So yeah, there are a lot of movies that I enjoy that are sad. But the, there's another movie that I have that's really sad. It's called Philadelphia with uh, Tom Hanks. And Denzel I have Washington. never seen it. It's like you know what the ending is going to entail, yeah. but yeah. you're still not prepared for Maybe it. Maybe we should have it. We should have like cry series. That's what like I'm saying. I cry a lot. Is my issue. Oh like, yeah. There, if a movie makes me cry, then I feel like the movie did a really good job. Agreed. Yeah. And so yeah. I watch a lot of things that like. There's like the Netflix anime, like Violent Evergarden, which after episode two, every episode makes me cry <laughs> because it's either happy or it's like sad. And they did a special once where it was, so the premise of it is that this girl was in a war. She was trained to be like a fighter. So she doesn't have emotions because she was basically a slave and she loses both her arms oh. in the war. So she's yeah. got like these like chain mail arms that she can use and so she joins like a letter company because during that in that world um they still send letters and there are people who people still like, write letters in this world but the way they don't have like technology communication oh. kind no, of like phone, stuff like that are so, they like set also too not to interrupt you but they're like set in like a victorian era it's a weird steam like kind yeah. of victoria like steam punk kind of a thing kind of yeah. yeah um but in this world you have special people who are hired to write letters that invoke the emotions of the people who can't read or write to them. So not everybody in this world can read and write. So for the people, you have people who write letters for them and it's like an art. And so she learns through different experiences and she becomes like the best writer despite not understanding everybody's feelings. And she kind of learns through different stories. And there's a special where she talks to uh, a woman who's a singer and this is like after a war just occurred and she's trying to write a play and she needs her help writing the play, but she's like, I've never written a play before. And the whole point is that she's trying to write this play about a woman who's lost someone and she has lost her future, her fiance to the war because every day there's people who come back on trains and you wait for them and she waits for him. So the musical that she ends up writing make brings me to tears because it's, sad and it's happy and it talks about the lives that were lost because she's not writing a play about herself she's writing about the people so we should definitely so, do that. oh god it makes oh. me cry every time and the ending <laughs> has me the ending has me crying because they ended it in a movie and i ball every time there's an episode yeah. of this anime i'm like let's watch it i gotta cry today <laughs> yeah it's like a healthy like i just uh, yeah there's great. one about a mother feel those emotions the, the worst one that got me is there's an episode about a, a mother who knows she's dying and oh. she has like a little girl and so she hires Violet to come write letters but she writes letters for every year yeah. and it's like you see this girl and she ends up passing away and then on her birthday every year until she turns 18 she gets a letter from her mother Aww. that's like you know dear blah blah like you know wow she you're like 18 blah, blah. years no, but like I forget her name. Just trying to line this in here a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, she she writes a letter every year on her has a letter sent to her. So she wrote all these letters in advance wow. because she knew she was gonna die and not be able to see her daughter grow. Yeah, so and so it kills that. me. I'm like, Ugh, my heart. <laughs> yeah, wow. it's oh. Oh, so it's so beautiful. You know, the only issue with this is I'm gonna be conflicted on whether to choose a movie that's like sweet and very sad or just well, something bleak. I want depression. No. And I just want something. you to make me Just depressed. something. <laughs> you watch and you walk away and you're like, Oh my God, don't do that. Oh, like, what? oh my God, I could do First Reformed. It's a movie where Ethan Hawke is a priest and oh. uh, he get he, he starts 
realizing the environmental state of the world and he gets I mean, radicalized. Yeah. yeah. Oh god. It, I can't think of the most depressing movie. This to is gonna be around. fun, guys. And this is gonna be fun for our viewers. Yeah. Get ready to be depressed. <laughs> For a month straight. I have to be like careful whenever I watch First Reformed. I gotta make sure things are like going okay in my life, oh, or yeah. else like it gets me in a real mood. Oh. Yeah. Oh, no. And that's the one you want us to watch. watch. It's a very. I've it's like it. honestly one of the most powerful films I, I was, I've seen. I was it's just. Say, think about like the fact that a movie has an effect on yeah. you is, is amazing. It, it just it forces you to contend with like oh no climate change is real and it's coming. Yeah. It's already here. Yeah. Uh, well, according to, not according to some people, but you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I always try to be hopeful. There's always. <laughs> <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> or I could just go with like a good, good weepy, you know, a good like. I like that. Yeah. Depressing. Well, now, now I have I to watch pay. First Reform. Oh, I think you'd really like yeah, it. You really I should watch. And then you should watch a Card Counter too. It's like it practically works like a spiritual sequel. Really oh, that's outside. Yeah. I thought those the cameras were a <laughs> card counter. Yeah, right. it's uh, Oscar Isaac. He, oh, that's right. Yeah, he that's he right. used to torture people in Abu Ghraib, and now he counts cards. Nice. <laughs> because a casino is built very like a prison. Yeah, it is actually. Yeah. Wow. wow. God. <laughs> well, Girls of Rushfort, I it was I, I enjoyed it quite a bit. Really liked the music. Vibrant, beautiful. Shot movie. Um, two, I don't. I don't know up. what the French were doing to film in like the sixties, like film stock. But, but like, it looks so beautiful. Yeah. Like all their all the color stuff coming out of France in this era is just like, wow. Yeah. It really remarkable. Yeah, I'm trying I to really think which like movie is the most depressing I've ever seen because I can't think of it. I watch a lot of depressing movies. I'm sure by the time we do this, man, you will find one that we I won't. I'm having a hard time. I also really enjoyed this movie. I like mm. the vibrancy. I love the dancing. I love the singing. I loved everything about it. I loved the ending because it's, for me, it was more like hopeful than bleak. Agreed. Yeah. But I yeah, like when the music really goes ba 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 ba. Yeah. Yes. Me too. That I is, liked it's it. gonna be stuck in my head for about a week. Yeah. <laughs> I like. I really liked the the girls. I thought they were great in this movie. They were. They are real life sisters. Really, because oh, yeah. they did not look alike to me. I was thinking <laughs> that too. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, the actress who played Solange died very shortly after filming yeah. the film. She was in a car crash, yeah. and the car caught fire, and she couldn't get out of the car. Catherine Deneuve is still with us though, and she's she's cool as hell. Yeah. Yeah. No, I liked this movie. I thought it was really fun, especially the opening where they're all dancing on the. <laughs> the crate, and I'm like, that's a way to pass the time. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Um, merci. The wee wee. Poor watching. Um, bon voyage.